Hey YouTube! So this is Jennifer Hiles for those of you who might have just stumbled across my video or for the new subscribers, welcome. Um, my name is Jennifer Hiles, I'm 30 years old and I basically just share my ABM journey here on YouTube for everybody because when I had to go through a bunch of things it was really hard for me to find anybody I could relate to so it's kind of like to keep it documented for any of those going through anything or the same thing to have somebody to relate to. Um, you can feel free to look back at my past videos and kind of see like what I used to look like, what I went through, how I got through it, those kind of things. Still getting through a lot, but we're still here to tell you about it. Um, if you want to check out like my full story, you can go to www.gofundme.com slash Jennifer Hiles. I'll put, put the link in the description bar. And um, if you want to follow through on like for frequent updates, you can follow me on Facebook, which is www.facebook.com slash Jennifer.m.hiles. And that's about it. Um, I'm getting really bad at updating my videos lately. It's getting really hard to like push myself to do it. I know I want to do it, I just suck at getting it done, so I'm sorry about that. But I have a few updates here that I wanted to keep you guys up to date with. So here we go. Okay, so the first one, I don't know if you guys seen my last video that I posted, but it was for a lifetime show coming out in January so really soon called this time next year and I think I already said it will be on lifetime but um, I was lucky enough to have like the producer people call me and ask me if I wanted to be a part of the show which of course I said yes and I basically went to Hollywood da, 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 November 2016 and recorded on the stage and then throughout the year I basically did like video documentaries and had like people I know film it for me or they flew down here to help film it as well and just kind of document my journey through the course of the last year and then I went back to Hollywood again in October just like last month or something to like wrap the show up so I guess like everybody on the show will have something different that they're trying to accomplish in the year and not everybody's like even close to being the same like there are some that are so far apart like obviously mine's on my medical journey and there's some with like weight loss or book writing or just like just literally anything but I got to meet quite a few of the people so I'm really excited to see their journeys um like another person had their face tattooed and they got those removed and another person was like a woman I don't know how old she was but she wanted to be a, a bodybuilder in a year so that one's gonna be impressive too I'm excited to see it I don't know whose house I'm gonna go to to watch it yet because I'm probably gonna feel really weird when my story comes on because I'm the kind of person who takes videos like right now and I'm never ever gonna watch it again because if I do I'm gonna like critique myself super hard and sometimes I think I put way too much of myself or my feelings into them and then I feel weird when I look back at them I'm like do I really want to put that out there so I just do it like one time and just give it everything and then never look at it again. So I know there's like a lot of them, me just like crying and freaking out videos. I'm really nervous for those to come out, but I guess it is what it is and it will only be like shocking for me to watch it one time and then I'll be used to it. So I hope you check in on that this time next year on Lifetime starting in January. And I don't know which episode I'll be on, but I'll keep you up to date when I figure it out. And some other things that I am getting to be a part of, if you're in the UK at all, 
there's apparently a show there I don't know if it's already out or it's been out but it's called born different and if any of you guys have checked out the other two videos on me that were filmed by the Barcroft company um, they came and filmed here and then they filmed in New York but there's two videos or like five minutes each if you just type in like Jennifer Hiles Barcroft like B-A-R-C-R-O-F-T um, they should pop up there's two of them I think they're gonna kind of like combine those two videos and then like update it with my current videos from here and then the interview so that should be out on that born different show in England so I'll keep you updated on that as well and then the other day I actually had a call from Tokyo and I was like who in the hell is calling me from Tokyo <laughs> and I was kind of laughing saying that sometimes I have like different people from around the world call me about my story and kind of want to do something on it so I was laughing and saying maybe it's that but then they called back right away and it was totally that so um I guess I am gonna be a part of a show there as well and it is called the world's astonished the world's astonishing news apparently it's been out for like 10 years now and they would just like me to be a part of it and so I guess they're gonna come to our house and film again and then you know like take some of my past videos and like everything they can find on the internet about it or anything I give them and then put um, my story together and I'm really excited about that one just because they seem like they're gonna report like actual real things you know like the lady who's talking to me seems like really honest and not like she's trying to tell me everything I want to hear and then I'm gonna find the story later and it's gonna be completely flipped you know because that happens almost every time but I don't know how I'll ever be able to watch it because obviously I can't read or speak Chinese so I'm still pretty cool <laughs> um, the doctor's television show has gotten a hold of me like I don't know it's probably been like two months ago now and I'm still hoping to hear back from them but hopefully that happens because my grandma watches that show and I think she would love that my grandma's so cute okay so those are like the new things that are going on as far as my face it's healing I guess always healing it's kind of like a longer break than all the other times so that's good um my this thing my this thing I don't remember what it's called my skin from over here that's moved over here a skin graft is doing pretty good it's still a very rectangular but it is what it is I'm sure it'll take a while it seems to like be bubbling up right here which I don't like I hate the thick scars so bad like they're so annoying and bah. I just wish they'd go away but I can't do much about it but yeah it's really thickening up around it and then this is really thick from where they move this piece of skin up in my nose and um this was really getting thick for a while and it was even thicker than it is now but it feels like it's kind of calmed down like it's still there the avm's still like in there but it's not like like about to explode feeling which is good can you see my cartilage in there it's like popping out oh <laughs> gross but yeah my my scars just really seem to be thickening up and this is really choppy. Um, these are still all crazy. And of course my neck. But it's healing, I guess. Um, I did, did start having like injections on these scars in Sioux Falls, which is like two hours away. So I drive there. I was originally supposed to drive there every two weeks this entire time and it was supposed to start at the beginning of September but I'm a procrastinator because I knew how bad it hurts and I didn't want to do it so I just got it done like a couple weeks ago if that um, the first time well they've injected it many many times 
but only once when I was awake and it literally felt like they were holding like lighters to my face like full-blown fire it freaking hurt and it didn't stop hurting after they were done it hurt for like three weeks like full-blown just like that and then after that it kind of like went from like a 10 to like an 8 so it was a little more tolerable but it hurt for a really really long time so I was terrified to go get it done but luckily like when I went there I went to go see Dr. Bright he's a plastic surgeon in Sioux Falls he was a wonderful patient kind listening love him to death I forgot how much I loved him he's also the one that um injected my tissue expanders when I had those so it was a lot of crazy feelings going back in there just thinking about like the last time I was in there how terrified I was that I was about to go to New York and get my face ripped off but I made it through and it's just crazy to think like how fast times went and how much I've had done in that time so I got I had a really really hard day that day actually it was rough I'm happy um my would be like sister-in-law's brother came with me Jason Beals so I'm glad I didn't have to go there alone because I was losing my shit like literally I was freaking out but I went there and I had it injected and obviously it hurt but it didn't feel like fire thank god but it felt like my nerves are so screwed up like so screwed up I don't know where they were at like at the time but I watched the video back and like it didn't matter where they were at it felt like there was like 500 needles just stabbing me in all parts of my ear and all over it's just like my ear has taken so much I know they've cut out the scar so many times and like cut it on my ear and it's just like I, I really don't like that ear but anytime something happens like even if they're down here I feel like I want to be like stop like this so maybe I could touch my ear when they're doing it and just kind of like hold it I don't know but after that I really flipped out Wrong day. but I got through that um, dun, 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 dun. um my lip 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 that's like the biggest part that I don't like I like really super duper 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 scooper don't like it I miss my old lip like I was just talking to my husband about that like literally yesterday it's crazy it's kind of like one of those things where you're young and you think you're super big and fat and then you grow old and then you get bigger and fatter and you wish that you were like as big as big and fat as you were when you were young when you thought you were big and fat but you're like just fine everything was fine you know that's how I feel about my lip like before my lip was well it was bigger than the bottom one but I was like it's so big but I didn't like obsess about it but I knew I knew it was bigger but like now I have this lip same lip I didn't get different ones but like it's different it's so, and even when I say my lip, I'm pretty much talking about this whole entire area. It's just so big and like hard to move because there's so much crap in there. I can't imagine it all being like layers of skin or whatever. I feel like it's fat. Like, I want it out so bad. But yeah, my other lip. Even though it was a little bit bigger, I could move it just fine. I could talk just fine. I could smile just fine. I could even look and see what my teeth look like in there, which is really hard for me to do. Well, I guess obviously now because I got these different one giant ones in. But like, I can't see if these teeth are out. Like, I can't see. Like, I can't see even if I go. Oh, I can now. I look like an old person but I literally can't ever check anything out in there because it's like covered so I really really either want I either want like no I always just want I want lipo on this thing so bad and I want it lifted and like I guess like my plastic surgeon here was describing to me that 
like I could go in and get it lipoed whenever my doctor will do it but um, if there's not that much fat in there and it's just like layers of tissue they would have to go in and take some of the layers out but they have to decide if it's like worth the risk of damaging the nerves in there so I don't really know what's gonna happen I wish they would just lipo it and go from there because that sounds like the easiest less crazy thing of it you know like just light blow it I'm getting really impatient and I keep joking about like just escaping to Mexico and having them do some cheap lipo job on me just to see how good it works because I'm so desperate like I just want it done I don't want to wait anymore like with everything on my face if the avians like not bothering me bleeding like crazy like going nuts I just wish that I could get the things taken care of on my face, like, that bother me, you know? And, like, this is the only part that bothers me, so just, like, please take it off. But, yeah, there's that. Someday, patience, right? It's funny, because I asked God so many times to give me patience, and then he gave me a bunch of things that made me impatient, but I'm pretty sure... Like, if you ask for something, you're going to get the opposite to teach you that or something. But I'm tired of learning about it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. And then with my teeth. Oh, yeah. Look. I clicked them in. They are getting really short, which is a good thing. It feels really weird, though, like when I talk. Especially in the morning when everything's all tightened up. Like, it's really hard for me to, like click them together and make the sounds that I'm supposed to make um, they're just getting shorter and that's because these are the temporary ones I think it's called a flipper I think it's called a flipper pretty sure my words run together a lot sorry um, but yeah when Mr. Randy Papalicious gave these to me ever so kindly um, he told me that like my gums were really swollen and even at the time I was like they're I didn't feel like they were that swollen I felt like they're fine because I always feel like everything's fine but of course he's right and I'm wrong because like you can just tell how much my gums have like uns unswollen themselves I don't know the word for that my brain doesn't work right but my gums have receded gone back up to the non-swollen point of before and so therefore so did my teeth because that's what they're resting on like you can tell how short they are that keeps clicking in but I still love them because there's teeth in there obviously oh yeah and before when I like figured out how to talk with no teeth in that just went out the window because I take them out and I just talk like an old person no offense old people love you and my sister makes fun of me for it, you jerk. <laughs> but yeah, they're like, this is where they are. And this is like, and this part gets stuck so hard. One day, well, not one day, many days, I cannot get this thing out and freak out. But it's getting. a little better but like I feel like they should be like about here ish I don't know I don't know does that seem right ah, but I don't know I just want them to be seen which obviously the main thing is the lip but in my brain I'm like when I get new teeth I want them to be extra long rabbit teeth so that the world can see them like everybody a lot of people keep coming up to me and being like oh so I thought you got new teeth and I'm like and then they're like why don't you wear your new teeth like dude they're in there just have really fat lips shut up but I just want them to be seen. I know it's not the teeth's fault, it's the lips' fault, but... Patience. I'm not good at patience, guys. 
I'm really not. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yeah, but I'm pretty sure I, um, Randy told me the other day, like a month or two, and I can get the permanent ones. Those ones I think are made of metal, so I'm not sure how that works. We'll find it out. Thank you, Randy, if you watch this. You're awesome. I love you. Okay. Okay, so everyone keeps asking about my next surgery, and it is not scheduled because I have yet to schedule it. It should be scheduled already, but I just haven't done it because of like a million reasons that run through my head all the time. It should be like in December, which is next month, but I just honestly don't know what to do because It's just hard. Like, it's honestly really freaking hard to go back and forth to New York City all the time. And, you know, the flights are outrageous. The hotels and apartments are ridiculously outrageous. And I never know how much the surgery is going to be. Sometimes it's cheap and sometimes it's hella not cheap. And... It's just a lot for my brain to process that I'm going to have to go back there and do that like basically forever to keep this thing under control because I know I'm at a good spot right now but if I don't keep doing it like it could go backwards like I could get to as bad as it was before and worse so that part brain screws me a lot but I just like legitly don't know what to do about it. And I feel like a lot of people think that the amount of money that my GoFundMe page represents, like, actually represents the amount of money I have. And that is so far from being true because I've literally went there 13 times. I've stayed there, I've stayed there for four months. I've had... To pay for all those surgeries all those flights all like literally it is not cheap and my brain brain process is just that I don't know how it is even possible to make that happen forever it just legitly don't seem possible and it's too much for my brain to handle and I don't know how to keep it going so Like, I don't want to say that I gave up, but I don't know what to do. So, I'm pretty much just at, like, a standstill right now. And also, a lot of people seem to think, like, I've seen people, like, here and there say that I must be loaded because I'm, like, going on these little TV shows, but that's not how it works. Like, I literally don't get anything for any of the shows that I've been on. I didn't get a dollar back from this time next year. I didn't get anything. Like, I literally got like $500 from Barcroft. And that's it. So, I mean, that paid for like one airplane ticket. But I just don't know how to do it. I really don't. And I try not to like freak out and think about it, but it's hard not to at the same time because I just, I want to be able to keep it going. Like, I want. I obviously I need I need to not even that I want to like I want to kind of need to mostly but it's just outrageous like I never ever thought when I started everything that I would have to like do this so many times I thought it was gonna be like a one-time thing maybe like two or three even like maybe in for a year I don't know what I thought but I never thought that it would be this much And it's really, really, really hard for me to tell everybody that, like, thank you more than anything for helping me get to where I am right now. 
but like I need more like it's I can't do that it's hard for me to do that I don't want I don't like asking people for things I like doing things for people and it sucks like it really does suck I just don't really know what to do so I just kind of hoping and praying and brainstorming of things and you know maybe something good can come out of like everything that I'm putting out there I don't I'm not like expecting it but I just I just don't know um, my husband and I were talking about it the other day and the only thing that we could think of that would even like logically make sense to happen is for us to relocate and move to New York and even if we're like two hours away from the city it would be possible because I'd be like on Medicaid up there and Medicaid would pay for the surgeries and I wouldn't have to pay for an airplane ticket to go 1400 miles away and then after the surgery when they make me leave the hospital right away he could just drive me home it would be like driving from here on to Sioux Falls but I mean that's the only thing that we thought of but that's really hard for me to accept because I love my family like literally more than anything and I don't want to be away from them and if I did I sure as hell wouldn't be here and here on South Dakota because this place isn't like the most ideal place of fun for me there's nothing going on here I mean there's like great people there's my family but like I like to do things I like to be out in the world I don't know but that's my train of thought I guess Um, it's been hard like honestly I'm not gonna lie it's been freaking hard I've honestly just been like ridiculously depressed here and there like I have days where I'm good like right now which is surprising because yesterday I was like a total crap show I sucked I literally slept like forever and just spent the other half of the day crying and freaking out because I'm just like mentally it's mentally emotionally exhausting everything is it's hard like I said like when I first started I didn't think I'd have to have so many surgeries and to be able to keep it going is just like how you know like how do I do it and then To think even that I have to have surgeries for the rest of my life to be okay, that's hard for me to accept, but I know I have to do it. But then even if I wasn't able to have the surgeries, like that's even harder for me to accept because I want to be here more than anything. I want to see my kids grow up and, you know, visit my parents and play games with my siblings and just all that stuff. I want everything. So, it's like I don't have any choice in the matter, I guess. And I just sometimes wish I had like a choice. Sometimes. I know like most of the time I accept it, but sometimes I get into a funk, of course. And just the whole like financial thing is frustrating, I guess. Like, like I know who my husband is and I know what he's capable of and I know that he's so strong and determined to do all these awesome things or that he would be like you don't voice him out but I know that like if it was up to him he'd go do so many different things and he was even taught like we always dreamed about like going to the redwoods or doing anything like that and he was talking about like doing it next summer and I was instantly I like I feel like a fun hater because I'm like I don't want to waste my money going to do that even though it seems like a fun thing like I have to put like my life first and I just feel like sometimes I feel selfish and I know like it's not but I don't want to feel like a weight holding everybody back or like like I feel like so much of everybody else's life depends on like how mine goes or what I have to do like me 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 and I hate that I really hate that 
I feel like I like put them through a lot and that their lives would be like way different if I wasn't here. And I know I shouldn't think like that, but our minds can be like so against us sometimes and it's really hard to not listen to it. And again, like, as far as surgeries go, like, I want to have as many surgeries as I need, obviously. But it's hard for me, like, as a person, not knowing anything to know if... To know, like, what's right, you know? Like, even just some things, like the injections, if those things hurt like hell, like, I would have pictured them. And I was supposed to get them every two weeks. But then this doctor, it was like some injection, I think it was like a steroid called 5-FU, or maybe it's a steroid, I don't even know, that's the part, like I don't know, I hate that I don't know stuff. But I was supposed to get it every two weeks, and this doctor here says like, that's crazy, and you do it every three to four weeks, so it's like, or three to four months. Like, and just the way he was describing like each process, the way like each doctor has it all, you know, planned out. It sucks that things are so different and like I I don't know what the right thing is like I I hate that I don't know like like all these things are about me and my life and like they completely and totally affect me like a thousand percent but I don't know anything I know sometimes when I get in like a super funk, I don't know, I just feel bad about myself and like, I just, I just feel like an obligation to people. Like I know I'm a big fat financial obligation to people and I know that it sucks and it's hard sometimes to wonder like if, if my life is like really worth making everybody go through so much crap. And I know that that's not true, maybe, I don't know, but it's hard, my brain like super screws with me a lot. And even just this part, like, I just want it to go away. I like tell, I don't know, usually I, I just keep everything in because I feel like I talk about everything so much that it's probably really annoying but it's my life and so I'm always thinking about it but I don't want to like annoy people with talking about the same thing all the time and I don't feel like I do that but even just bringing it up here and there it's just like I have the same worries and the same thoughts the same like things that make me scared so it's really hard not to put them out but, I don't know, my husband even the other day, he told me that he missed my smile and he missed me being happy and like, I so miss that too. That sucks. But, he reminded me that it's literally all in my head and everything I think is like, just this illusion thing that I hold myself up to or something and I know what's true. It reminded me that I'm beautiful and that he loves me no matter what. He's always going to be there so that helped a lot. And today seems to be going pretty good so I'm really thankful for that. It just sucks that your brain is like so powerful over like your thoughts are so powerful and you can sit there and like talk about being positive while you want but like sometimes it's hard to get out of it and I don't I know it's all in my head 
I know we can change it, but sometimes it's hard. But just keep working through it. We'll get through it. It can't last forever. Like, literally nothing bad can last forever, right? We'll get through it. He'll get through it. I'll get through it. It'll be okay. We just have to, like, tell ourselves that our brains aren't <laughs> right. Like, our brain's stupid. Don't listen to your brain. Don't ever listen to anything that your heads tell yourself. Because, like, or that anybody else tells you. It's, like, way too easy to, like, hear a million good things about yourself and just be like, ha, oh, thanks, or whatever, and then you hear one bad thing and it just sticks with you so long, whether you tell yourself it or somebody else does. But we gotta, like, get rid of that. Get it the hell out of there. And I'm just gonna, like, keep trying a bunch of different things. Like, I made a whole list of stuff to do every day because... I'm pretty sure if you get yourself like in the habit of doing like certain things, then they'll stick. You'll make like a habit of it, obviously. But that's my goal is to do a bunch of kick ass things until something clicks in my head and I'm good. And it helps if you're surrounded by good people that care about you and aren't jerks. So if you're having a hard time and you're surrounded by jerks, that might be a reason. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Some days are easier than others. Yesterday, probably one of the hardest today. Pretty good. And I'm thankful for my husband for listening and trying to understand, even though I'm not sure how much he actually understands, but he's still there for me, and I appreciate that. And I have a lot of other support, like, you guys are awesome, and thank you for always supporting me and being there. It would seriously be so much harder without you guys, so thank you. Um, he's gotta keep on going, like, nobody said it was gonna be easy, and that's, like, one thing somebody said to me when I was in, um... New York for that summer I was having so many surgeries and my face was literally like dying while it was still connected to me it was so hard and I was in such a freaking funk like it was bad and somebody was like hey nobody said it would be easy and I was like oh damn they didn't say that did they like nobody said it was going to be easy and like did I actually expect it to be easy because most things that you go through that are you know you know if they're gonna be hard or not but then we just go through them and then we're like oh this is hard so I'm gonna stop like I give up you can't freaking do that you like you literally can't do that like in your mind you know they're gonna be hard and they're gonna be a challenge so you have to like keep working through it and things are gonna get hard and you're gonna fall down and you cry and it's gonna suck you gotta get your ass back out there you're never gonna get through it and when you do get through those things like I've hit so many like spots that I didn't think I would make it to and I was just like oh like it felt really good and that feeling is worth feeling crappy for for a while so just pick yourself up well, I haven't really been doing much I literally hang out with my family which is a lot they're awesome and that's about it we just hang out and I've been tired a lot like my body's legit tired I sleep more than anybody I know my husband makes fun of me all the time he says I'm old now cause my body's just exhausted like I can't stop being tired I miss the days where I had like so much energy like I literally just wake up and be like what up like smile let's do this you know it's a little different now my body just feels tired but it's okay i know i know it takes time patience 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 um one thing i'm excited about getting back into doo, 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 thanks to matthew matthew fenton he found this um it's like a dogwood challenge dogwood 52 and you take like a different picture every week and there's like a different subject thing so 
I'm about to get my camera is literally like I have a couch and then an ottoman and it opens and then you put stuff in there and you close it. Damn it, I just told everyone my secret spot. We'll pretend like I didn't tell you that. I don't know how to edit videos, obviously. But I, I, I have my camera hidden, my secret spot. And I literally don't use it anymore. And that was like my absolute favorite thing in the world to do. Like I love taking pictures. I feel like I have a good eye for it. I'm I like be good at ed like editing stuff. And after I started surgeries, I literally just stopped using it. And it's been so long that I can't even remember like what button does what. So I'm gonna have to reteach myself everything, but I'm really excited to do it. I went and found out that I could get Photoshop and Lightroom together for like $10 a month, so I went and did that. And me and my husband and Matthew are all going to do the Dogwood 52 challenge, so I'm excited. It sounds easy, but it's just the thing for me like every week to make sure I have my camera out and I'm using it because I don't want to throw away like my life and everything that I find important just because I have surgeries going on. I don't want to do that. And I did do that, but I need to knock that shit off, right? I don't want to read that page to you. That'd be awkward. Da -da 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 -da. So, I'm excited for that. Oh yeah, I watched the movie Wonder the other day. It's really good. Um, I basically started crying at about like five seconds because it just hit me right in the feels and I didn't stop the whole time and I'm pretty sure I cried for like an hour and a half after it ended because it was like hitting home so hard for me that it was a lot I guess and I really seen a movie that like I could relate to that hardcore and it was really good wonder it was just in the movie theaters, probably still in there. But, um, damn. Like, there's a little boy, and I don't, it, it never really said what was wrong with him. Like, I knew he had, like, 27 surgeries to maybe open his eyes and his nose, like, all these things. But he looked different. And it just showed, like, what he went through starting school and how hard it was for him. And,. All the thoughts that went through his head and like like there was what like a few different parts that I could relate to like I'm pretty sure he started school in middle school so everybody else already had like their friends laid out and everything which I changed schools a lot so like I could relate to that a lot a lot a lot like 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 you're like Jenny shut up a lot like okay Okay, I'll try. I recognize. Okay. Better recognize. Um, I'm so stupid. Anyway. Okay, like, and I did it again. In fifth grade, moved to Mitchell, and I had to walk in a classroom, like, midway through the class, through the school year, and it was, like, really rough. Like, like, like. Shut up. Why do I do that? Only when I'm making a video. I annoy myself. But I had to walk in the classroom and everyone was looking. They weren't mean. They were not mean that I know of. But even just going into the lunchroom, like you know lunchrooms, everybody is has their like little groups that they're sitting together with and do you have to awkwardly like go find a table to sit at and hope they're cool and they're not like really mean you know so and even if you do find one I felt like this my whole entire school besides after no I found friends in Mitchell they didn't make me feel weird but in Sioux Falls I felt like that pretty much and then here on I felt like that even though I like n know who everybody is now at the time it was really hard for me just to sit down and feel like I wasn't 
not supposed like I wasn't supposed to be there I guess because I was so shy I literally didn't talk to anybody I always just wondered like what people thought about me and even sitting at the table that I sat at I was just wondering like is everyone looking at me and wondering why I'm sitting at this table because I don't talk to anybody anyway I'm just completely socially awkward and I wish I wasn't like that in school now, but I definitely was. Um, so I could relate to him when he went to sit down and nobody was sitting with him. And then people did come sit with him. He was like, do you, you don't have to do this. Like, you don't have to be my friend or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm so sad. And um, even on Halloween, he said Halloween was his favorite because... Like, he was wearing the scream thing because he couldn't find his, like, bolo bit or whatever costume. But he was in his scream outfit, and everybody else had mask and costume on, and, like, he blended in. Like, he actually fit in. And he could walk through the hallway, and he was just, like, high-fiving people, and everybody was cool with him, and he was cool with everybody else, and he had so much confidence because nobody knew who he was. Like, he wasn't the person that looked weird or different. He was a normal kid in school with his Halloween costume on and I I don't know there's just so much to think about that like when I painted my whole face a few times I felt super blended in I guess before this nose like the last nose that was kind of blendable but um even just like wearing a mask and stuff or I've always pictured myself, like, not always, but a few times, like, being the school mascot because I was, I'm so freaking shy. Like, I literally didn't do good in high school at all because I was too shy to get anything done. Even if I, like, like, I'm a damn good writer. Like, I'm pretty good. I kicked ass in English, but it, my grades wouldn't reflect on that because if I had to go up there and say something, I'm going to act like I didn't get it done. And that's just because I didn't want to talk in front of people. I felt really shy. I was so nervous. Like literally my voice would go from like normal range to like, you can't hear me because I don't know why my voice does that. Sometimes I could talk loud if I'm comfortable with you. Not a lot of people. And then most of the time if I meet a new person and I'm so awkward. Please don't take my awkwardness as not liking you. I just suck at talking. But my voice will be like, this is tiny and nobody will ever be able to hear me. It's pathetic. Pathetic. Um, but yeah. The Halloween thing. I just... It was pretty on point. Um, and then just other parts, seeing that poor little boy cry and wondering because he caught his friends like talking bad about him and that just like broke my heart. I've never caught people doing that, I guess, but when he went home and he was saying, he was just crying in his bed and he was like wondering why it matters so much that we look different because we literally feel the same on the inside so i why does it matter so much that we look different and like is the way we look always gonna make such a difference it's getting me again it sucks that it matters it really does suck to some people that it matters you know and he's just like is it always gonna matter that I look different you know and his mom was like I don't know <laughs> this is true you don't know it has a defense on like who you're around or whatever and I love that one of the the friend one of the friends if you guys haven't seen this, you need to fast freaking forward because I'm like blowing it for you. I just realized that. I'm a horrible person. But one of his friends straight said that like once you get to know him and like see past all, you see past all that stuff. Like you don't even see his face. Like it doesn't matter anymore. 
And if I had anything for every time somebody said that to me, I would be like rich in that thing. Because so many people have said that about me, like right away, they're just really curious and wondering like what happened to me. But after a while they say, they, they say that's my personality outweighs the way I look and it doesn't matter anymore, which I thought was really cool. And um, yeah, another thing, but just my main point is like coming from a person who looks different, I guess I just realize I'm kind of like disfigured in a way too. So coming from a person who has lived having to face the world looking different than everybody else they hit that crap they they literally hit it on the head like they did really really good so many feelings and thoughts that i thought and felt were portrayed like through that movie and they were done perfectly that is one of my favorite movies ever honestly and one thing that really I guess hurt me was the fact like the sister in it the sister always felt like she was never the center of attention or she almost even felt like an only only child because the little boy had so much that he had to go through like he's always having surgeries he was always getting hurt he was always like having so many emotional problems in the fa the parents obviously just thought he needed this like extra special attention so they would give him their all you know like trying to make him feel okay and fit in and all these things that the daughter felt unimportant like anything she said or did like didn't matter in a way and like she was l less important and I guess I don't even know like for me if it's that true I guess I don't know because I'm not like my siblings but I would hope to God that they don't have not ever like felt like that because I know I go through a lot of stuff and I know like even my parents will post these things about me and I hope they never feel less important just because of crap I have to go through because they are so damn important. <laughs> They mean so much to me, like my siblings are literally so wonderful and great. I love them so much. And nobody's ever more important than anybody else. So that I just felt so bad for that girl in the movie. And then I was just like, I hope my, my family's never felt like that. But I don't know. And if you have, I'm truly sorry. I really am. Um another thing about that girl is she I think I've said this before but it's so damn true don't compare your problems like don't put your problems like oh your problems are worse than mine so I don't feel like I can talk about my problems that like that means so much to me and that hurt me and that are getting me down I can't put those out in the world because you're having a harder time than I am or have someone talk about something and be like you're going through that like you should try going through what I'm going through it doesn't even compare like why are you even talking to me about that what I go through is so much worse than what you go through don't even like don't even talk to me about that that is horrible like I hate that so damn much and like in the movie this girl's going through so much. Like, she's growing up, she's being a teenager. Her best friend stopped talking to her, and like, she just felt so alone. Her grandma died. Her family was so focused on this one person, she just felt so alone. And it like hurt that she felt so alone. And it doesn't matter why you feel alone, or why you're hurt, or why you're having a hard time. Like, everybody has their lows, and like, their lowest lows are their lowest lows. They need not to be compared to anybody else's lowest lows, ever, like period, because they don't know what it's like to go through what you went through, and thank God they don't have to, you know? But they're going through their stuff, and they need help and support through it as well. So please never, ever, ever compare yourself to somebody else. It's like, bothers me so much when people do that like don't do that 
ever. Like, I don't know. Like, I would never want to say one person's hurt is like more than another person's hurt. Like everybody, like obviously there's different scales of like things that could happen that are horrible or scary or hard, but we don't need to like put them on a scale. There's no need for that at all. Um, I don't want anybody just to ever feel like they can't talk to somebody, you know? Cause like that was how it was portrayed in the movie and I feel like that does happen in real life. But your problems are important. The way you feel and think are important. And if somebody just doesn't understand you or doesn't want to understand you, please remind them that like, it's real to you. Even if somebody else can't understand it or thinks that you should just get over it, it's not that big of a deal. Your problems are real to you and you do deserve somebody to listen to you. You're not. You should never have to feel alone in that. Ever. Like, that could be your biggest problem in your life and you need somebody there for you, you know? Like, just for example, not trying to be a jerk, but I had a person message me the other day and say like I've seen all that you've been through or whatever and it looks hard but what I went through is way harder so and I'm like okay well what did you go through well, and she said something she's a diabetic and she got really drunk or something and then she was in a coma for eight days and then she woke up and she was fine and I was like oh okay well since you're comparing it like that sounds really hard to like get drunk and then sleep for eight days in a coma and not remember a damn thing of it and then wake up and be okay like don't compare your crap to my crap please because that just made me so frustrated like don't i never said that to her obviously but like dude it is hard like I do live a hard freaking life and it is a struggle every day sometimes harder than others to get through it I don't need somebody telling me that me like going through surgery every time and not knowing if I'm gonna wake up and see my children's face or if this thing's gonna come back even worse or take my life or like even just what I'm gonna look like or find financial ways to get like to and from one place to another that's 1400 miles away just go through the stress of like finding all the air flights and finding the hotels and finding everything and not knowing how much surgery is going to cost beforehand that's hard and I don't want you to tell me your crap's harder than mine because this is like the hardest thing I've ever been through and if she would have like approached me a different way and told me, you know, she was sorry for what I have to go through or something and not even have to say you're sorry or just like, I recognize what you're going through and I'm going through a hard time too and I could have, she could have told me what it was and I could have said, oh man, like, are you okay? That's, that is hard. That's scary to know you're in a coma for eight days, you know? I hope that you learned your lesson and you don't get blackout drunk again and end up in a coma. I hope nothing else is happening to you. You know, I hope you're okay, but I don't want things to be compared, ever. And I don't want people, like, sometimes I have people come up to me and be like, oh, I'm having problems, but they're not as bad as yours, so I don't feel like I could even talk to you about them. Like, dude, I'm your friend. I love you. I want you to be able to come to me and talk to me. Like, I don't want that barrier of freaking scales. Like, don't do that. So please stop doing that if you're doing that. Sometimes we don't know that we're doing it and when people can like tell us, then we're like, oh yeah, hey, I do that. There's a really good book like that. It's called um, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff in Family. That book called me out on so much of my stuff and I love being called out. If it's being called out like with love, then I can take it really well. Check it out. But the movie Wonder, even though you don't have to see it because I just told you the whole damn thing. Pretty good movie. Um, but yeah, we're all going through hard times. We're all going through struggles. And we need to talk to every single person we meet with kindness and love and just care about them. Like, you never know. You might be the only person that they feel like they have on their side. 
and they might not even feel like they have anybody on their side so be a good person and be there for people I hope people are there for you as well also um, I gotta do this really fast Thanksgiving is over I had a great time with my family I hope you had a great time with your family as well just love the holidays and um, Christmas is coming up as well and I know that's crazy this first year went so fast that I can't even hardly believe it but uh, Christmas is coming up and it can be stressful but it doesn't have to be please remember that um, we need to just remember why Christmas is a thing Jesus was born on this day so happy birthday Jesus and uh, my husband just reminded me the other day and just like put it into perspective again like he keeps doing but he said uh, why is it on a man's birthday who had nothing like you know like God he had nothing I don't even know if he had a house he might have been homeless he might have just had the clothes on his back like correct me if I'm wrong but he had nothing and he literally just went just bearing the problems of the world on his back you know being there for people loving people accepting people oh, so much he just loved us like endlessly no matter what it's beautiful so on a person's birthday who is just like that and that we just claim to be this big God country then why the hell are we spending so much time and stressing so hard over filling our Christmas trees full of stuff and I know that like guilty okay ever forever even like when I was younger when the kids were younger like the first couple Christmases I couldn't afford like anything and I felt like the biggest piece of crap because I could only get my kids like one present and I was so stressed out I felt so bad I couldn't get all my family something like and I instead of going through Christmas remembering why it's Christmas like I literally just felt so bad and that should not happen like if you guys are going through that recognize and stop like Christmas is about Jesus and if you talk to your kids like I talk to my kids and I I asked them the same question and they said well I don't know like why do we do that and I was like I don't want to get you guys a bunch of mindless presents I don't want to fill the tree as full as I can get it because in my head all the other things I thought before was the more presents under the tree whether they were going to be appreciated or not like I could get like this cheap little thing which they might play with or they'll have fun with it for two days and then it'll just be in the bottom of the toy box to clean out in a year but if I could just fill the tree with as much stuff as possible they'll have a good Christmas because our trees filled and no like I, I putting an end to that this year I only want to get them stuff that they need or like I know like I, I I'm still I'm an American person I'm gonna get my kids a couple presents but I'm not gonna freaking fill it under there just being like this is all Christmas is about like how freaking high I can stack my Christmas tree this is not what it's about you should not walk around feeling stressed or worried or like a bad person because you don't have money or you're spending all your money and you're gonna be broke and struggling like don't do that don't do that to yourself just talk to people remind them the meaning of Christmas remind your kids the meaning of Christmas my kids were so understanding they were like you know we already have everything that we need and it's okay like we're good and I'm like oh, it, kids are so understanding if you're just open and honest with them just please don't stress yourself out it's a fun time of year we're supposed to spend it with our families um, be thankful you know that we're here we're like we're alive thank you God you know thank you Jesus and there's no reason to get everything so stressed out and like freaked out about enjoy your holiday like let it be good it is good everything's good you don't have to do anything to make it good it's already good okay love yourself love everybody else and be there for people just do good everything's good right I think so but that's all 
I have. I have to go pick up my children really, really fast. But I love you guys, and I'll try to make another one soon. And if you have any questions or something you want me to talk about next time, put it below if you made it this far, one hour, five minutes later. But I would love to just jot it down or read all the comments and um, be able to answer your question in my next video. And until then, I love you guys and thank you for your endless support and love. And 